Hello everyone, welcome to Chris's Daily Read Aloud. Today we are reading chapters 5 and 6 of Mary Pope Osborne's Magic Treehouse, book number 8, Midnight on the Moon. As we left it, remember that Jack and Annie were in a moon buggy that was going way too fast on the moon, that they didn't know how to drive. So, if you haven't heard the previous chapters, go back to the last video so you can catch up on what Jack and Annie are doing and join us then for these. Chapter five is called Hang On! Annie drove the moon buggy over bumps and hollows. It bucked like a Bronco. I'm going through there! She pointed to an opening between two mountains. Jack held onto the dashboard. The buggy bumped toward the opening and shot through. On the other side, the ground was even rockier. Look for the f f four thing, M thing, said Annie, bouncing up and down. Jack groaned, looking for anything on the wild ride. It was impossible. Slow, slow down, down, he said. How? Try pressing on the brake pedal on the floor slowly. Annie pressed the brake. The buggy slowed down. Jack sighed with relief. Whew. The ride was still bumpy, but now at least he could take a good look at the moon. He'd never been to such a colorless, barren place. There was no green, no blue, no red, no water, no trees, no clouds, only giant gray rocks and craters, and an American flag. Oh man, said Jack, that's from the first astronauts who landed on the moon. And look, a telescope, said Annie. She drove near the flag and the telescope, then she put her foot on the brake until the buggy stopped. She pressed a button that said off. She and Jack hopped out. They took slow, giant steps to the site of the first moon landing. Beside the flag was a sign. Annie read it aloud. Here men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon. July 1969 AD, we came in peace for all mankind. That's a good message, said, Aunt, said Jack. He handed the moon book to Annie. Then he took out his notebook and pencil to copy the sign. Let's leave our own message, said Annie. What should we say, said Jack? The same thing, but say we are the first kids. Jack turned to a new page in his notebook. In big letters, he wrote their message. Now we have to sign it, said Annie. Jack signed his name. Then he passed the notebook and pencil to Annie. She signed her name and passed the notebook back. notebook back. Jack tore out the piece of paper. He put it by the flag. Today, the first kids from the planet Earth came to the moon. We came in peace for all children, Jack, Annie. No wind would ever blow the message away. No rain would ever fall on it. It would be there forever, unless someone moved it. Thinking of forever made Jack feel dizzy. He thought his head, he shook his head to clear his thoughts. Then he remembered the time. Had two hours passed yet? I wish I had a watch, he said, standing up. We might be running out of time. Oh, wow, a moon man, said Annie. What? Jack turned to look at her. She was staring through the telescope. Jack walked over to the telescope. Annie stepped aside so he could look too. Jack gasped. In the distance, something was flying above the ground. It looked like a giant man in a spacesuit. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter 6, High Jump. Who is that, said Jack. I don't know, said Annie, but we'll find out soon. She started waving. No, said Jack. He grabbed her arm. Let's get back to the base before he gets here. Why, said Annie. We don't know who he is, said Jack. We don't know if he's friendly or mean or what. But we can't go back, said Annie. We haven't found the fourth M thing yet. We won't be able to go home. It doesn't matter. We can lock the door at the moon base until he goes away, said Jack. Then we can get new air tanks. Jack hurried to the moon buggy. Come on, he jumped into the driver's seat. Annie gave a little wave to the dot in the sky. Then she climbed into the moon buggy. The buggy took off. Careful, said Annie. They bumped over the rocks as Jack turned the buggy around. Then they zoomed toward the pass. Jack steered around craters and rocks. More than once, the buggy nearly tipped over. Whoa, slow down, said Annie. They were almost at the mountain pass. Suddenly, a cloud of dust flew up in front of them. The ground trembled. Watch it, cried Annie. Jack couldn't see a thing. He stepped on the brake. The buggy jerked to a stop. The dust settled. A giant rock had fallen into the narrow pass. It was stuck between two walls of rock. They were trapped. Jack quickly found a picture of a giant rock on the moon book. in the moon book. He read aloud. Rocks of all sizes crash into the moon from outer space. These rocks are called meteorites. We're lucky that meteorite didn't land on us, said, Aunt, said Jack. Yeah, and I guess it's too big to be the M thing, she said, or said Annie. She had climbed out of the moon buggy and was standing by the meteorite. It was more than twice as tall as she was. Jack looked at the black sky. The flying thing was nowhere in sight yet. We'll have to jump over it, said Annie. Jump? I don't think so, said Jack. It's too high. I'm going to try anyway, said Annie. Wait, let's think first, said Jack. 
but Annie was already backing up. One, two, three, go, she shouted and took giant leaping steps toward the meteorite. When Annie got close to the rock, she pushed off the ground. Then she flew through space and disappeared behind the meteorite. Annie, Jack called. There was no answer. Oh, brother, said Jack. He backed up and took off toward the rock. He jumped as high as he could. Then he was flying through space. Jack hit the ground and fell face down into the dust. Jack tried to stand, but his suit was too bulky. He tried to ro ro roll over, but his suit made that even that impossible. Oh no, he groaned. Not again. Are you here? asked Annie. Did you make it? Yes, Jack was relieved to hear her voice, but he couldn't turn his head to see her. He could only hear her over the radio. Can you help me up? he asked. Nope, said Annie. Why not? I fell down too, she said. Oh, brother, Jack sighed. Now we are really in trouble. He tried to stand again and failed. Can you see anything, he asked. Just the sky, said Annie. Wow, is it weird. I'm worried about our air tanks, said Jack. I, f I feel like it's been two hours. J jack said Annie. What about the moon man, said Jack. Where did he go? Jack, whispered Annie. What? He's here, said Annie. The moon man is here. What? He's standing above me. And that is the end of chapter six. Chapter seven is called The Moon Man. Join us tomorrow to find out what happens to Jack and Annie and if the Moon Man is a nice person. Okay. I hope you all have a great day. Wash your hands, stay safe, have fun, and join us again tomorrow to find out what happens next in Jack and Annie's adventures. Bye everyone. Have a good one.